the breaking economic numbers, the new snapshot of the Canadian economy, inflation numbers for the month of February. And Scott, where do they fall? Uh, they fell right to 5.2% for oh, the month of February. even lower than expected. Lower than expected. In fact, that's the lowest it's been in the last year. So this is all good news from the Bank of Canada's point of view and probably a lot of consumers out there as well as far as uh, this is down from 59 in January, down 8.1 back in June. So it's moving in the right direction after all those eight rate hikes from the Bank of Canada. And digging into some of these particular numbers, food remaining extremely high at 10.6%. This is a third, or sorry, the seventh month that it's been double digits as far as uh, uh, over 10%. That's, but it is down from 114 the month before, but still extremely high. Digging into that, we had cereal prices up close to 15% year over year. Sugar prices up 6%. Fish and seafood 7.5%. Fruit juice is close to 16%. Dairy 9%. The list goes on. So there's still a lot of pressure on the food basket. Now the thing that led the drop was gasoline prices. For the first time this year, gasoline prices have turned negative for the year, down 4.7%. So that's good news for us filling up at the pump uh, as well and shelter costs up 6.1 percent what's interesting about that is mortgage interest costs all by itself any mortgage holders up there up close to 24 percent year over year and that's the fastest increase for what people are paying on their mortgage rates going back all the way to 1982 and those were terrible times as far as double digit inflation back then so some good news from the perspective that inflation is going the way that a lot of consumers and certainly the bank of canada want it to go bank of canada raising the interest rates to deal with the inflationary problem. So with things going in the right direction, how is this likely to affect the Bank of Canada's strategy then? Yeah, it seems, well, Tiff Macklem has indicated that he wants to pause, and he paused at the last mm -hmm. interest rate decision. The next one's due is April 12th, so we're expecting maybe another pause unless something happens here. So this is playing in his narrative and exactly what he wants. And so in the meantime, we're looking at the rest of the markets, because on the other side of the equation, we got the U.S. Federal Reserve meeting tomorrow. They have not signaled they're going to pause at all. They're expected to rate uh, a hike their rate a quarter of a point. So let's take a look at all the mechanisms out there reacting to this. We've got the price of oil up about a dollar a barrel after being uh, hit about 10% of the downside just last week, one of its worst weeks in the last few years. We have the Canadian dollar, pretty much no change, maybe a smidgen to the downside on this, on no pressure from the Bank of Canada to raise rates. And the rest of the markets, they are looking pretty green and pretty calm after a pretty tumultuous couple of weeks. We have the S&P, the Dow, and NASDAQ all firmly in positive territory. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, sir.